There's an old saying in trading that says, sell in May and go away. And well, this year, I've been doing that to the fullest. Luckily, thanks to Spotify for podcasters, I can record, edit, schedule, and distribute my episodes everywhere from wherever I'm at using either my phone or my computer. Also, video podcasts are available as well in case I ever want to share the views with you guys as I hop around the country. So if you're interested in starting a podcast and perhaps you're worried about all the complicated background stuff, put those worries aside because with Spotify for podcasters, it's now easier than ever to get started. By the way, you know what else is easy? Monetizing your show as they literally do all the work for you. So head over to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started today or simply download the Spotify for Podcasters app. It costs you nothing, which brings me to another saying I enjoy. If it's free, it's for me. Hey guys, in today's episode, we're going to talk about making the uncomfortable yet necessary adjustments to your trading. And if you're a new trader, listen up because you probably need to hear this. There are going to be many things that you feel you need to do, many things that you feel that you want to do in trading that are actually very harmful for your trading results. But for some reason, we have this temptation, this desire, this itch that we have to scratch and we need to stop it. Today's episode is actually a recording from one of our live trading rooms where we were having having this very same discussion with a trader who was sabotaging himself. He knew he was sabotaging himself, but he couldn't find it within himself to stop sabotaging himself. And he even told me that when he took out the sabotaging acts, he was able to increase his return on investment by 15%, yet was still tempted to do the bad stuff. So if you feel like you're in that same situation, make sure you listen up and hopefully this podcast can help you as well. If I see a setup to see if it meets my criteria. Um, yeah, I, I would reverse that, Greg. So if you're going to do higher time, like I, I believe you should, you should start with your higher time frame and go to your trading time frame. Now, I'm not going to tell anyone there's one set way to trade, but your higher time frame is what's going to tell you if there's actually an opportunity. And then you go down to your trading time frame to confirm that opportunity. The problem if you do vice versa is you're going to get a confirmation bias where you're going to be on your trading time frame and you're going to find a reason to trade and something that you want to trade and in your head you already want to do it. So when you go to your higher time frame, it's a negative confirmation bias because you just want an excuse to do what you want to do. All right? So I would always start with your higher time frame. That's going to tell you the lay of the land, where we're actually at in the market. And then your trading time frame will confirm if you can actually do it. So I would do that in your testing as well. Start with your higher time frame, do your I and your P, identify, predict, then go down to your trading time frame for your execution. So I, I always want to work down. Because I find if I personally work up, I have a, a, a bias that actually isn't there. Because now I just want to confirm what I already, if I've developed the bias on my trading time frame, I've already decided like, hey, I want to trade this. Now it's like asking for permission. So it's one of those things where it's like, if you've ever been in an argument and someone like asks you a question, but they already have the answer they want in mind, and they're just asking you to get like confirmation, and you're like, you're going to do it anyway, weren't you? You're like, yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the same type of deal. And you do feel like you have that bias. Yeah, it, it's natural because like it, it's like it's like we're doing all the work first and then asking permission. It's like we already did something and then we're asking permission to do what we already did. It's kind of like that. Like we already did all the work and now we're like, hey, do you mind if I do this work? And you're like, in your mind, you're like, I already did it. Just tell me yes. Versus asking permission to do the work first and then actually starting to do the work. Um And again, the, the big part of trading is just understanding ourselves mentally and, and, and putting ourselves in positions to succeed. Greg says, I think it's because I want more trades to test by doing it on my trading time frame, but maybe I get more uh, losers because I'm taking trades that I would have a bias to take. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the sabotage. Again, I put out a podcast the other day. I'm not sure what episode is it, uh, it is because I do far too many podcasts, but it was talking about the transition of traders, how we, we start off and we want to trade all the time. We want as many trades as possible, whether it's live trading, whether it's back testing, we just want all the trades. And then 
as we, because we, we think more trades, more opportunities, more opportunities, more money, kind of like the whole time for money thing, where it's like, if I just work more hours, I will make more money. Well, there's, there's a limited time of hours that you can work, right? If you just work more hours, you'll make more money. Well, what happens when you've, you know, if you're working 10 hours a day, think about it like this. If you're working eight hours a day and you want more money, work 10 hours. Okay, I'll work more and I'll get more money. All right, well, I work 10 hours a day. I want more money. I'll work 15. All right, I work 15 hours, I make more money, right? You keep doing it, you can do that, but eventually you're going to hit 24 hours, right? When you hit 24 hours, you, there, are, there, there are no, by the laws of the land and the universe, there are no more hours in the day for you to work. So you've exhausted your ability to make money, right? So then what's the key, right? If you can't, you're working all you can, you, you've made as much money as you could, how do you progress from there? Well, then you start thinking the other way. Well, it's not about working more hours. We're not even talking about the, the human element of being tired and burnt out and dying, right? The, the, the way to think about it is, okay, well, how can I maximize my time? How can I create more time? Well, you can create more time by being more efficient. So if you can become more efficient and do the same amount of work that it took you 24 hours to do, if you can cut that in half and do it in 12, now you've bought yourself 12 more hours. You can do whatever you want with those 12 more hours. You can chill, relax on the beach and, and, and sip a frozen margarita, or you can start a side business that allows you to work 12 more hours on that side business. And now you've made more money. Well, maybe you get that side business more efficient. Now what you do in 12 hours for that side business, it only takes you six. Now you have six more hours, right? You become more efficient. That's the way to earn more money. So trading is the same way. It's not necessarily about, I wanna take as many trades as possible and do as much as I can. It's really a quality over quantity. Because if you take more trades, right? If you, have, if you cast a wider net, you're just taking more losers, right? Like there are winners in there as well, but there's also a lot of losers. And like you said, you, you find that your, your, the quality of your trade is probably going down, right? So as you work more hours slash take more trades, the quality of the trade that you're taking is going down. Just like as you work 24 hours, the quality of your work is going down. You're not going to be as efficient and productive on an hour 24 as you were in hour three when you were fresh. So you're working more but achieving lower quality work. So the, the, the adjustment that we make as traders is understanding that, hey, I don't necessarily want to take all the trades because there's a lot of low quality trades in here, but I want to take all the high quality trades. And what you find out is that you create this filter. It gives you only high quality trade setups. It's going to be a lot less. But when you have a lot less trades to focus on or a lot less whatever to pick from, now that opens up more time for you to perhaps build in another strategy. And again, this other strategy that you've been able to build because you have more time now, once again, you decide, hey, I'm going to go quality over quantity. So I'm not going to take all the trades. I'm only going to take a good amount of trades or a fair amount of trades. And before you know it, in the same amount of time that you were spending on one low quality strategy, now you've got three or four high quality strategies that are producing you higher quality trades, which are going to produce you more profit and less drawdown with the same time investment in the market. And that's, uh, that's the key. But, but we don't, it, it's, it, it takes time to get to that point because again, the mindset at the beginning is just trade as much as possible. More opportunities, more profit, right? I have an edge. I want to exploit my edge. Just take more. But we forget that our edge will decrease as the quality of our trade decreases us decreases decreases as well <laughs> um extra res i suppose um uh graystone loves this way of thinking timeless and spaceless business yeah yeah space businesses in space yes sorry i just need an excuse to get back onto the space bandwagon i got a cool book about space that i i was told not to read until like june 1st which scares me a little bit but I'm excited to, to crack it open. Um, Greg said, my last pair I tested was a 37% uh, winners um, that eliminated trades that higher time frame didn't confirm. And it went to 52%. Look at that. You just increased it by, my math is off, uh, 15%. 15% just by eliminating, the, just by throwing in that, that higher time frame filter. 
but for some reason, my next pair, I've done it in the same way. Yeah, it's because you want to. The, 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 the other brain inside of you is telling you quantity, 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 quantity. But the numbers in front of you are telling you, I'm a lot better. I'm a lot better when I do less. This is, you know, uh, we talked about the Sixers getting eliminated the other day. Very upset about that. But it's like, we have the MVP, Joel Embiid. Great player. He has one problem, though. He's this big, like, seven-foot monster that's unstoppable in the paint. The problem is, he keeps going out to the three-point line and taking these dumb three-point shots. And he could make them. Don't get me wrong. He can make them. But he makes it a lot more when he's down in the paint, when he's real right under the rim dunking on people. So every time we watch a game, we're like, look, get your big behind down there in the paint. Stop venturing out here and taking those, those low percentage shots. Take the high percentage shots, right? But it feels good to shoot the three and feel like Steph Curry. Yeah, but you make it a lot more when you're closer to the rim. It's not as sexy, no. There's less opportunities down there, yeah. But it goes in more. And the result is you score more points. So Greg... Get you behind in the paint and start dunking on people. Stop taking these three-pointers that are that are clanging out the rim every now and then, right? You can take it every once in a while. That's fine. But get you behind in the paint and start slamming on people. <laughs> that's, it's much more efficient. 15% more efficient. Think about how much money you're saving. Think about the big... Think about... Greg, going back to our conversation earlier, you can go to Miami and flex on them. I've got a white tiger I can sell you. I bought it and got bored. You can go to Miami and flex on them. <laughs> but seriously, though, yeah, the, the numbers are right in front of you. It's, it, it's not as sexy, but it's more productive, right? And that's what we got to understand. It's not going to be as sexy, but it's more productive. And at the end of the day, right, trading is a business. This isn't a hobby. We don't do this for fun. I hope that you have fun doing it. I enjoy it. But this is a business at the end of the day. Like the number one goal isn't to be happy and laugh and giggle and feel excited. Like it's to make money. And I can be happy and laugh and giggle with what I spend my profits on, right? When I take money out of my account and I go on a trip, I can laugh and giggle and be happy all I want. When it's trading, it's strictly business. And although I enjoy it, I need to do the things that are best for the business. So what I love about the Trading Coach Podcast is that we get to share these stories, the stories that I'm, I'm dealing with on a, a regular basis with traders, with you guys. And many of you guys are in the same situation, yet you don't think you're in the same situation because there's really no one to share it with. And that's the, the value of community. So if you want to join a community of traders, I highly recommend it. I also recommend getting an accountability partner to keep you on track. And there's no better place than our website, www.tier1trading.com. We have an amazing group of traders of all different levels. We have seasoned vets that have been in there for years, and they like to hang out because they like to help newer traders. And we also have newer traders who are still trying to figure it out. And I think it's important to surround yourself around both. That way, you can get the motivation and the knowledge from the older traders, yet feel comfortable with kind of the mistakes and the dumb stuff you're doing with the newer traders. So check us out, www.tier1trading.com. See you there.